Hi everybody, it's Amanda from the Professional Beauty Team. Welcome to our weekly Friday Instagram Live. Um, so we host these lives every Friday interviewing some amazing people who work within the beauty industry. And today we have a very special guest joining us. Um, his name is James Reed. He's a celebrity spray tanner. Um, he has his own range of tanning products called the James Reed Tan. And the range has won more than 30 awards, which is incredible. And he's worked with the likes of Naomi Campbell, Mariah Carey and Ellie Goulding, just to name a few. So um, we're going to be linking him in in a minute. And he's going to be talking us, to us today a little bit about how he made it big in the industry. Um, he's going to be answering some top spray tanning troubleshooting issues that um, you guys may face. And he's also going to be talking a little bit about coronavirus. And we're going to ask, ask him a little bit about how he is prepping his business to reopen when beauty businesses are actually allowed to do that. Um, so let me just see. I don't know if James has come in just yet. I'm sure he'll be here in a second. Um, but just to update you guys while we wait for him. Um, pretty much we've been having a lot of content go live on the website this week. We've hosted a whole range of really brilliant webinars. Um, some have included uh, advice on how to prep your business ready for when COVID-19 lockdown and the restrictions on businesses are over. And we also have some more information about um, uh, coronavirus and how you can prep your business next week. We have an amazing panel with the NHBF. Um, we're going to have Helen Ward, the hair and beauty charity are going to be on it. So that is going to be one to watch. Um, we also are going to have a male waxing 101 session which will be brilliant for all you waxers. Um, we're gonna have a brow session as well. So brow lamination, microblading, semi-permanent. We're gonna have a brow pro talking about the pros, the benefits of each of these, who are the best people to work with on them, and also how you can effectively offer them in your business. But um, enough about that. James is here now, so I'm just gonna link him in. Um, just a drum roll, just a few seconds, and he will be here. And then we can talk about all things to do. With oh, hi. <laughs> hi, James. How are you? I'm oh, great. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm it's such a lovely sunny day, isn't it? So it, it brightens any mood, I think. A bit of sun. I know. It's absolutely beautiful weather. So that's one thing to be thankful for at the moment. But thank you so much for taking that's okay. the time. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Us. Hi. Yeah, happy so I was happy introducing sunny you. day. <laughs> it's, so you can't really say happy Friday because really it's like everything. every day is the same, isn't it, at the moment? It's like... It feels yeah. the same every day. You don't. You kind of like think is it a Friday or a Saturday, but it's like kind of, it's still the same. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the sun makes things. all the difference, doesn't it? Really. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just telling everyone, James, about um, kind of your career credentials and all of that. Um, but I think just before we kind of get into your career history and talk a bit more about spray tanning, I just want to ask you how you're coping during COVID nineteen lockdown and how you're managing your business this like during this time and prepping it ready for when you can reopen. Um, yeah, so basically, I think like I'm still working on like kind of ideas, and um, we're still basically obviously still selling online. So um, people obviously are buying online more so than um, going into like shops and stuff because I think it's obviously people are only going out for essentials and food and stuff. So, um, but I think I'm trying to like be positive and trying to yeah. um, think of things when this is all kind of got better and how to how to to do well or how to i think like you said was is i'm just trying to think positive thoughts and mm. um constantly doing more content with instagram and um like kind of speaking to bloggers and um magazines doing articles and stuff so just really trying to be as much uh, proactive as possible really um because i think to myself if i just stood still and did nothing i'd then probably feel very depressed and very um a lot of anxiety so I think how can I make myself better and that's just be positive and think of constantly thinking of things and working on the next plan um mm. is that kind of the best way I deal with it I think yeah I think that's true you know idle hands and all that I guess the key thing is to just try and keep yourself busy and keep yourself motivated and positive every day. and also have a good home life so it's like kind of I've got my dog and <laughs> like yeah. kind of it's a like very um um you know like just making sure that you kind of um I'm happy at home and it's a that's a good environment as well and um, I you know I'm loving the sun as well so it's like <laughs> kind of uh, it's a good thing if anyone's you know 
blessed to have a garden or like a, 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 a veranda or I like kind of I like the fact that I'm just gonna uh, catch the sun or like kind of but also I don't sit in the sun because I've obviously I've got a self tan bracket <laughs> so I, <laughs> obviously I fake it and then but I've, the funny thing is as well because I thought to myself are people still using self tan because obviously you think mm. um, but I think people are more pampering now at home than they ever have and I think like kind of a good thing to, for people that it actually is a positive thing is the fact is I think when this gets better I think more people are going to want treatments more people are going to want to feel good and I think getting mm. they're going to want their hair done they're going to want to get waxing they want to get massages they want to get facials they want to get spray tans and, or you know buy beauty products so I think the whole idea of if they feel down and the whole world is is not a great place but actually if you look good and feel good then actually the that gives you a good feeling so I I think actually beauty is probably still going to do be okay because I think mm. people still want to look good and feel good. People still need their hair done. People still need to to feel to have a massage if they've got a sore neck, or people still need waxing. People still need their nails done. I think that is something that actually is a positive thing because I think beauty is still people. I, I myself, I still use self tan. I, I use my products even though I'm at home. Like because obviously, if you're FaceTime your family or you're doing. Um, your friends and mm. you still want to look good and I think it automatically when you walk past the mirror if you look like like you said a ghost <laughs> you know yeah. it's like oh my god if I've got a tan on I feel actually feel good so um hopefully then I look good I feel good so yeah <laughs> I, I talk for so England true. so I'm like I can talk 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 <laughs> I think that's so true. We're hearing so much from colleagues, family, friends, other people in the industry, how much they want to see their beauty therapist, how much they want to see their spray tanner, yeah. their nail tech, their hairdresser. So I think these businesses are going to be really busy when they are able to reopen, which is something really positive um, to think about in this scenario. Um, but obviously, James, you are a big name in the spray tanning industry. You've worked with some amazing celebrities. You've established your own brand. Um, you know, how did you get to where you are today? And what could other spray tanners learn from you who want to aspire to be as successful as you are? Yeah, I mean, I think I just basically, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because you kind of, with a brand as well in your career, you kind of, it goes through like a kind of roller coaster. You kind mm -hmm. of, you have your goods, you have your kind of, you go down, you come up, you go, and I think it's like any career or any business, you kind of, you find your niche and you kind of, and I always take advice from like, when I've watched programs or seen, you know, things like the September issue of Anna Wintour, like American mm. Vogue, it's, um, you know, she always says, never look to the left, never look to the right with any business or if it's your business or, because if you look to the left and you look to the right and you're too busy concentrating on what everyone else is doing, you're not actually concentrating on what, where you want to go. Because I think, yeah. so I started out like, you know, um, many years ago working for loads of different brands. I think it was like eight, eight to 10 different brands. I used to freelance yeah. like Clarins, um, Guerlain, Saint-Tropez, Fake Bake, uh, Hishi, uh, Sally Hansen, Clarins, um, L'Oreal, um, Garnier. So it was very much like a, getting experience from all different like, kind of brands and then basically putting that experience in um, to my kind of knowledge. And I opened like a salon in the Samson Hotel, which was like the first ever like residency for a town in mean, like, the hotel. And then... Um, did like this whole tanning menu and tried to make tanning cool rather than just going for a spray tan. It was about like you had different names for towns, like the fashion town or the oh, um, really. destination town. It was like different layers. And um, the fashion town was like half body, like the areas that were on show for your fashion. Then there was like the ski town, which was just your hands and your face. <laughs> bit, or yeah. there was like the contour town. But it was all about like kind of trying to make tan fun. Mm. And then I opened the salon in Harvey Nichols. Um, and then basically the brand uh, kind of, you know, launched in Harvey Nicks and then sort of went, you know, did we launched like the sleep mask, which was like my hero product, which is like oh, overnight yeah. mask. And that kind of like changed, it sort of made self tan, because self tan before was much more about getting a tan. It wasn't really about what was in the products. So it started the whole trend for skincare and tanning. And yeah. I think uh, my advice would be to anyone is if you want to, if you've got your own business or you're thinking of things, always think of your niche like your unique selling point, like what makes your business stand out or differently. And it's like, I think like the last year, I, I'll be totally honest, actually last year, the year before, but like for two years, I think I just lost my way. Like I kind of like <laughs> didn't yeah. really know what I wanted and I kind of thought, is it really worth it anymore? Because you go through them like ups and downs and peaks. Um, and I've been doing it 18 years now. So I think I had to have one of those like kind of 
but then all of a sudden I got, I got back to my like myself and like my ideas started to flow again and I kind of um started to think of products that were like different and unique and um actually ideally just my my unique selling point or my 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 standalone so if you've got like eight products on a shelf if you bring out a product that's all the same technically mm. you're lost in the middle of a, a kind of a, a group of people or group yeah. of products but if you think of how can you say for instance like tanning drops like so i thought you know everyone's done tanning drops and but what's how can i do something different that's totally different and um so i brought my new products just come out it's called the clicking glow so it's like this one it's, it's a like a tanning pen oh yeah and it, you basically yeah. the concept is it's so it's enriched with hyaluronic acid vitamin c and all you do is you just click and then you glow but the concept is it brightens your skin instantly hydrates with the hyaluronic acid and capture vitamin c as well mm. but then you get it's gel drops so rather than tan drops it's gel drops so you use less moisturizer and you basically use less products, you get more effective results. So, but the color with this is amazing. Like I just put it into anything. And you mm. just, the concept is you can take it, obviously at the moment you can't, I can take it around my house, you know, I can go into the kitchen, <laughs> I can go into, but it pop, fits in your pocket, it goes into your toiletry bag or into your yeah. bathroom, anywhere. But it just makes tanning easy. So I think with, with products, I try and think, how can I make things differently? But how can I bring out something that's so unique and different but, mm. th but at the same time is, is my take on tanning, I think. Yeah, and obviously for those people who do spray tanning, but it's not the core part of their business and actually they want to make it a bigger part and they mm. want to gain more revenue from it. What's the best way to kind of market the services? I know you were speaking a little bit earlier about how you um, came up with different types of tans that had different, yeah. things, different things. Is that the avenue to go down is to try and find an angle that other people haven't done before and to make the menus? Yeah, a bit I think networking, like I, I was always like, because I actually did think what, I, this is what I was going to say, it's like networking. When I first started out, it was all about networking. So mm. um, you go to a party or go to a, an event, but you make sure you speak to nearly every person in that room, which is probably very hard to do but you <laughs> you you make sure that when you leave people remember you because i think it's like it, you, you want to make an impression because technically you then if you then do one client tan them and then you then it's everything's word of mouth so it's very much yeah. like you do one person then they tell three others and then them three others tell more um i always think like a good business card a good um design your own like a website of websites these days to do is very easy but that you can you know they're not that expensive to to yeah. set up your own website so have somewhere where someone can go um like come up with a tanning tanning menu for your services to offer something different and unique um that someone else can you know but also like your take on tanning maybe mm. offer like a few different types of products like not just one brand but a couple of brands just in case someone doesn't like that particular brand yeah. Um, so ideally, it, it, it is the, the idea of business. It's word of mouth. And if you go, if I go and get a facial, or I go and get a massage. If it's not good, I won't go back. But if it's good, mm. I'll go back and I'll be obsessive. And then I can't get an appointment. And I'm like, oh, God, you know. So it's like, because I used to go, even though I left, when I left the Simonson Hotel, I still went back for facials. But they closed, like, which was, I was so upset because I loved it there. And it was like, yeah. every time I went in, it reminded me of, the start of my my career and it was like I always yeah. felt like I was going to cry when I went in <laughs> so it was like I feel blessed like what I've, like, I've got I don't take anything for mm. granted and I think you've always in business is another good thing is always remember always be nice to people because you always remember you always meet them on the way up or the way down it's like yeah. it's one or the other so people always like nice people um yeah so <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you have some big celebrity clients what's the best way to get celebrity clients like do you should you try and be an ambassador for a, t a leading tanning brand or yeah. is there other avenues you can go down to kind of do that route i would say like also like, do youtube videos do like videos on tanning tips and do like get recognized or maybe like try and tan journalists and like journalists yeah. and because then they they write about you and then because that was like i my career was all very much like you uh, i I think like people say, well, you know, our career is based on luck, but I think technically or a business, it, but it isn't, it's, a, it's like hard graft. And it's about like, if I never met this person, I wouldn't mm. be here today or I wouldn't be there. You know, you meet people for reasons. So I think meeting people is so important. Like I met, you know, I, when I first started starting out, when I worked at Sanchez Power, I worked in Debenhams and I did spray tans and 
um, then the head of Sancho Pay, Michelle Feeney, she, she's from MAP and she came and took over and worked at, um, uh, for Sancho Pay. And she was like an amazing woman. And I started tanning um, Anna Marie, who used to be head of, uh, beauty yeah. director of Vogue. And um, we built this relationship up and she'd come in and she told Michelle about me. And Michelle listened to Anna. And um, so basically, Michelle then promoted me to the art artist relations. So she did the same as what she did with Santa, with Mac, because Mac had their artist relations where they went around and did the celebrities and events. Um, so she did the same thing for me. So um, that's when I started doing celebrities. Like I remember even in like De in the Debenhams, I used to be in this little broom cupboard. It's like Andy <laughs> Peters from like kind of in on BBC back in the day, or Philip Schofield, that was it when they were in the little broom <laughs> cupboard. And um, I remember like Rosie Hunston Whiteley used to come in there and um, to get tans when she was like, she was only like 19, 18 and she was just doing Burberry and um, and all these like kind of um, celebrities used to come into Debenhams. So I remember I started tanning Lady Gaga and then oh, I was yeah. like, I asked Debenhams because they wanted, she wanted a tan and I said I couldn't get out. So I asked Debenhams so, like, if they could open the store later to let her in and they were like no we can't do that and I thought they probably regretted it a year later because <laughs> yeah. she was so thick but um but it was like very much like I'd go out of my way and it was like it was hard graph because I'd be going at two in the morning or three in the morning and mm. out all the time and I didn't really have much of a life but actually it was worth it so because at the end of the day you can but even then I was still one of those people like that still be like, um, I remember like going to New York to do one of the, like, to do like, I always feel like a bit of a, like, a knob, like saying stuff like this, because I feel like I'm like name dropping. It's a bit annoying. <laughs> I always like, when you watch people, you go, like, oh, I'm such a name dropper. Like, oh. <laughs> but no, it's like just in general talking. But no, I remember like, going to New York to do one of Mariah's, Kerry, Mariah Kerry videos, obsessed video. And I remember like, um, like I was there for five days and I was like waiting each day like oh you know she, MC wants to turn tomorrow and then she didn't want to turn tomorrow and then the video shoot was on a, like a a Friday I think it, but on the Friday I was out with um, a girl that used to work that worked at San Jose still works at San Jose Sophie and we were like out in the in New York like getting drunk and I remember like all of a sudden I got like this call at like four o'clock saying oh um, MC wants to turn this evening and I was like like really drunk so I could like, go back to the hotel and like sober up <laughs> and then and then I was like I was there and I didn't do the tan until like two in the morning so I was like oh, so kind you of, had like, time to sober up a bit <laughs> but I did yeah no but I was over there and I wait I had to wait I waited until she was ready for the tan but I did the tan and then I was on the, the video shoot um but it just showed I still even though I kind of um I worked hard I still went out and did mm. I had drinking and stuff like that but I still lived my life but um yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had, I had fun. I've always had fun. <laughs> yeah, that is such a funny story. And just so you know, James, so many people have been agreeing with you on our comments about it doesn't pay anything to be nice. And yeah, actually totally being true. nice is the thing that people remember the most. Um, just talking about kind of funny. And also I say, well, don't get caught up in the hype or get caught up in, in like the whole thing is I've got, I've got a brand, but I don't get caught up in it. Or I don't think to myself, mm -hmm. oh, I'm this or I'm that. I'm just basically someone that does spray tans and someone that's got a brand but actually that's secondary on my life my life is my family my friends and my dog so mm. technically I love my job and I love it but it's no longer it's not number one it's number two but yeah it's a, it's a good balance of happiness and professional work and blah 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 kind of thing the old me years ago would have been here with a glass of wine but I'm professional <laughs> <laughs> as I've grown up I've become more professional you know yeah, well, to be honest, you know, it is sort of gin o'clock time, so... I know, exactly. But I've got, like, QVC US tomorrow, at, like, um, and I've got to be up at 4am, because it's, uh... it's, like, Skype, and they're, like, uh, it's 12 o'clock there, like, 11 o'clock their time, so basically I've... If I don't really want to drink, because I know I'll be right like, really come over tomorrow, and I'll be like trying to do like Skype, trying to sell a product, and I'll be like not even talking about it. I'll be getting the wrong product <laughs> wrong or something, yeah. Um, James, just based on um, some of the stuff we've been talking about, um, Molly has asked, what's the best way to Hi, get Molly. tanning jobs in department stores? She wants to know how you kind of set up that kind of um, relationship. Um, so I work with a brand. So I work with like um, Sancho Pay. Mm -hmm. And um, Sancho Pay was like a, the best time. So, like, it was a great learning experience. It was a good time to, to really um, like just experience um, working for a company and 
Um, I was very much like, I think, because I trained as a chef, I trained, I went in catering, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but mm. um, I started, like, worked in Debenhams, worked in on retail, and then um, basically someone rang in sick one day that was doing the spray tans, and so I had to do it, and that's where it kind of, it kicked off, but I think, like you say, it doesn't cost much now to get, like, equipment, like spray tan equipment, and mm. a tent, um, and then just basically practice on your friends, um and then maybe approach brands to see if they they you know if they need someone to you know to do retail for them like re usually there's like retail coordinators who go and check the products and um i think like you say it's very much now about like it is word of mouth and but i say like mm. it, it's like even tanning your friends or doing it getting your community you know like you kind of where you live like offering to do tans for people like doing it really mm. like cheap and then putting your prices up yeah that's as, as they like the times they want you so then they're gonna have to pay for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, we have one more question actually that i just wanted to get in just before i move on to another one i had for you um lou labelle has asked whether tan parties are a good idea um i wouldn't do one <laughs> <laughs> i have done one before like years ago but i find them a bit like because basically with tanning as well even though you've got like a ventilator the tan does go everywhere but it doesn't yeah. go everywhere in the fact, even though you've got like kind of extractions and stuff, it stays in. But if you're doing loads of people back to back, it kind of like, it, it, it kind of like fills the room slightly <laughs> because it's, you're not allowing it to settle. I remember recently I went to um, uh, a magazine house to do loads of tans and then they were like, oh, go in this office here. And I was like looking up thinking, oh, but it's like right near the fire at uh, fire alarm they were like no it's fine don't worry <laughs> anyway so i'm doing the tans back to back and then the tan starts to come into the air slightly and it doesn't really mark the floors because it's like all the the i mean if you're doing it constantly but it was like going up and then all of a sudden this alarm starts going off and it starts going oh my god clear the building there's a fire oh my god and i was like i was like panicking thinking oh my god please don't tell me it's like um it's the uh it's me Anyway, so this head woman's walking around the walkie-talkies and then we're allowed back in and then she comes into the room and she goes, this is the room, who's in here? And it was me. Anyway, <laughs> so I had to stop the tans because they were like, they didn't risk it because apparently they get fined every time there's a fire alarm. Fire alarm. <laughs> anyway, so that was the end of that. But um, tanning parties are, are good, but I think I'll tell you another thing why they're not good mm. is the fact is because you're constantly doing back-to-back -back people, it's very easy for you to like start to become tired and then not really do the best yeah job possible because i think sometimes you need like the gaps to do really otherwise you're rushing sometimes it becomes a bit of a rush to get people ready um yeah. also as well as i'm like very particular so you kind of like back in the day it was like 15 minute appointment but it took me half an hour because i'd be gassing and chatting to people about life <laughs> <laughs> so i was like oh 45 minutes later there'd be people outside giving me dirty looks like oh god i can't believe it <laughs> um james just actually based on this story and also the story that you told about mariah carey um it'd be great to know your advice and how to deal with any awkward situations that come come up when you're doing a tan on somebody like have you had any weird funny situations with clients that you never thought that you would have had to deal um, with before? yeah quite a few i mean celebrity ones i've traveled around there's been quite a few actually but not like usually most of the time i won't work with someone they're rude Sometimes yeah. they're rude people. I mean, I probably put my foot in it a couple of times. I remember once this woman was like, she had a robe on and it was at the Sarnison and she was coming up and I was like, I was like, oh, uh, are you, um, how, how long is the, when are you due? She was like, I'm not due, I'm not pregnant. Oh and I was God. like, and I was like, oh my God. So I was like, had to like, she was like so angry with me. Like I had to do the spray tan with this really angry woman in front of me. I was like, I'm so sorry. Um, but no, um, I'd probably say, yeah, uh, I definitely, um, what was the question again? It was very... Just about awkward moments. When oh, you're awkward, no, I, I think, yeah. no, I, I think there's been a few. I mean, there's a couple I couldn't really say, possibly <laughs> say, um, being a professional and all. But um, no, most of the time I don't really allow, I don't really like rude people. So I'll just, and if someone's rude to me, I'll always use, I'm actually one of those people that actually tell them. Mm. Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think as well, because some people may be first time spray tanners and they may not necessarily understand or know what happens in the treatment. So I guess it can never hurt just to keep 
reminding people of the etiquette when they come in and what is yeah. expected. Also, I think it's about making the person feel safe that comes in for the mm. tan. But I think, like you say, about like sometimes if someone's rude or someone in, in your, I mean, I'm very much start my career, I bite my tongue and not say anything. It'd be kind of like, cause you, but then at the end of it, you say, I just won't tan them again. But mm. actually, because at the end of the day, you've got to love your job. Also, you've got to love the people you work with. And if someone's rude and not pleasant to be around, why put yourself in that position or that situation? Um, no money's worth that. Um, but yeah. I think definitely, uh, like you say, it's, it's, if you give out what you get, but if someone comes in for a tan, it's about like just explaining to them about the, the treatment, about what they're going to get from it. And what I used to do years ago was like the layering, like when I had the salon. I mean, now I still do layering, but when people mm. came in to pay for treatments, very much like it was, you know, I, in the heyday, I'd do 20 in a day or 22 tans in a day. It was like there was people that offered to pay three times more or double to get treatments. Mm -hmm. It was quite a crazy time, but it was very much like when they come in, I'd make someone, you know, I'd chat to them. And technically it's like a therapy session because people, it's a safe place for them to feel comfortable to tell you about their life. And then the next week they come in and go, oh, how's the boyfriend problems? Are you all right? You sorted. <laughs> and then I'd sometimes like you, you find yourself up, off, offloading your own issues as well. <laughs> yeah. like, kind of like, and then they come in, oh, how's the problem this week? Oh, well, but it's a bit better than last week. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Because actually, if anything, when you, you end up, so one of my bestest friends, Jill, and she was one of my first clients all these years ago, like, God, like, 17 18 years ago and then now she's like my best friend she lives in australia and i go every time i go to australia for work i i see her so it's very mm. much i think i've made quite a lot of good friends out of it as well so i think it's yeah. it's a good thing because you it's not just about the work but it's about the people you meet and actually meeting people is nice i think yeah and when it comes to spray tanning what are some of the most common troubleshooting issues spray tanners ask you about that they maybe struggle a little bit with um, I'll probably say the hands yeah um, and the feet and the ankles so and I always like so I think and the wrists so um layering as well like sometimes people go too close with the gun so you mm. basically what you have is where you go too close the the tan drips down or it, it, you do too much of a thick layer so when I spray tan I go down in really fine but fast movements so the tan layers lightly on the skin. So you do it very quickly. And then you do, I usually do like two or three layers. So you think of it now, oh God, it's a lot of layers. But if you're building them up in fine layers, what you're doing is you're making sure you don't miss bits, but actually you're deepening the tan because actually your tan does get deeper in color and last longer if you layer. Mm. So basically you layer up the tan with the hands, you leave them till last, but you, you go over the hands really quickly, but you right, kind yeah. of turn the hands, because I always think that and this where someone is not the best way to do a tan, because yeah. like you do individual hands separately, because when you do this and this, you get the mm -hmm. cut off lines and you don't oh, want that. Course, yeah. So you do the spray the hands separately and then you turn and you just do, I kind of just flick the gun on the kind of the, the side parts of the hands, because you want it to be lighter, because a real tan never has a tan line on the side. It's always faded, naturally. Mm -hmm. And the wrist as well, so after you've tanned, like with the feet, like you go over the feet and around the ankles, then mm. get a mitt or a flannel and then buff around the feet and the ankles to, to kind of make sure the tan doesn't go into any crevices. With the mm. hands, buff over with a mitt over the knuckles, um, around the kind of the wrist area. So put a little bit of moisturiser after you tanned and then buff the moisturiser up the wrists. So then you get the fade down so it doesn't look as dark. Um, mm. If you see any areas on the face or the body where the tan's gathered, I always get like a little cotton bud and just dab on them areas. And this will stop the areas yeah. going too dark. Like if someone's got spots or eczema or psoriasis, mm. these are the best things to do. Cause it just stops, it makes the tan more, more seamless rather than looking unnatural. And also with the face, like never go too tan with the face cause the tan, the face is the first thing that people see. Yeah, so you want to be quite natural with the face and you can go a little bit dark with the bow. I think that's all really amazing advice. Actually, um, Samantha Jane Long has just asked, how many strengths do you use? Hi, hi Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only use, to be honest with you, I use like eight and 10%. Um, I know people like dark, but I've never, yeah. I've not been a really, I'm not really into dark tans, if I'm honest with you. Mm. I've always been about natural. I've always, been, I think I'm much more about like, you want your tan to work as a background color. 
So actually, you want it to not overpower your hair or your makeup or your dress. You want it to work as a background. So when people see you, the first thing they comment on is your whole look. If yeah. your tan is too dark, it takes over your whole outfit and your dress and your makeup and your hair. That the first thing someone says is, oh my God, you're tanned. Like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the same as someone goes down the red carpet. Well, you don't want it's a daily mail to go, oh my God, have you seen the orange <laughs> or this tan looks too dark? You yeah. don't really want them to comment on the tan. And that, that's the trick. It's about not even knowing you've got a tan, but you look healthy and you look golden. Yeah. And also, I think, um, like you said, you're a big fan of the natural looking tan. Is that the kind of the spray tanning look that you think is going to be really popular this year? And are there any kind of tanning trends that you think are going to fall out of fashion? Um, I think there's lots of things that are happening like in tanning, I think. like People want quick and easy now, so I think mm. express is going to be a much more of a, uh, a big thing um, going forward. I think people want, uh, are so busy with their lifestyles, they just basically want to just basically tan mm. and then go. And yeah. that's why I thought of the whole click and glow and the other products that I've got coming out this year. It's much more about like accessible products that fit into your beauty regime, the same as tanning or facials or anything people want quick and easy they want something that actually allows them to carry on with their day-to-day -day. that's why clear but you know water facial mists and mm. clear mousses are much more are very popular now because people just put them on put their clothes straight on and then they yeah. get a tan in three to four hours so i think clear tanning is but is is a good one but actually then you have to be very good at tanning to know where you're putting it because mm. it, it's about much i, I sometimes tan like a it's as if it's like a robot like motions because I know exactly I could do it blindfolded because I've done it for so many years <laughs> yeah. that you know where it's going so you know you're not going to miss parts but it, 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 I think it's very important to be competent in what you're doing so if you're doing something mm -hmm. if you're not competent with using clear then stick to an instant um instant still like a big thing but I think express is still is going to be the big thing I think still people love to go dark and people love to have mm -hmm. dark tan but then you're still going to have people that are much more into the natural tans. I think celebrities are much more natural looking tans now than they were back in the day. Gone yeah. are the, the over dark tans. I think it's much more about, um, what's the word? Very uh, kind of natural. natural. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Jane, <clears throat> we've had a couple of questions come through and I just want to try and get as many of these answered for people as possible. Um, we've got Body and Celeste has asked, are there any good spray tanning booths that you would recommend? Um, I'd say and actually, there's, sorry, there's quite there's a, a second part to that as well. Sorry, I didn't see it. And they also asked, um, should clients moisturize the day of the tan as well? Um, yeah, so basically, t equipment wise, there's lots out there to be honest. I would say do your research. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't really recommend one particular one because I think there's there's lots out there and similar. Actually, most of them are all the same to be honest. You just put someone else's different name on them, <laughs> you, um, you'd be able to find a, a good one. But I also think moisturizing people always say you never moisturize before you get a tan, but actually, mm -hmm. that's wrong because actually, you could have really dry areas on the body or um, and I even the face, I always put moisturizer on my face before I tan. So I always like if I'm spraying my water mist on or any facial products, I'll put moisturiser on um, if my skin's really dry and dehydrated. I think that's why tanning drops are massive now because obviously you can fit in with your beauty regime and um, that kind of thing. So I think um, moisturisation, if, if, if a client's got really dry skin, I would recommend it. If their skin's actually not that dry, then they don't really need to moisturise. But you do need to moisturise like the hands, the feet, the elbows, the knees, any dry areas. But um, if someone's got really dehydrated skin, then I would. Otherwise, what happens is when you spray tan them, their skin goes slightly um, snake-like mm. because actually it, they're, they're very dry. So actually the tan won't be even. Mm. Brilliant. And they've said thanks. And I'm sorry for pronouncing your hand all wrong. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, and, and she's had too many gins. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a gin yet. Look, you, you said, said you're on your sick. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, and yeah, another question. Oh, this is a brilliant handle as well. I hope I pronounce it right. Minxter Girl um, has Hi. asked, <laughs> should I get some years of experience working for a company before I go self-employed as a spray tanner? Um, you could, but I think, like you say, if you're confident in yourself and you think, like it is much more about like, speaking to friends and tanning friends first and then um 
it's about that it's that big thing of like should I go on my own like you know mm. I took that risk when I was like at the San Jose and I thought should I do this should I leave and that's when I started like doing freelance for loads of different brands like a um, consultant um, but I took the risk and I thought it was a, a big risk but it was like security or take a risk and do something on my own but um, I did that so um, and I feel glad that I did so um, sometimes a risk is good I think it mm. risks always better Yeah. And um, we've had one other person comment, um, Adam, and he said, how often should I exfoliate? I'm a 40, I'm a, sorry, a 30, not 40, a 30 year old male. Um, so exfoliate um, every like two to three days. Mm. Um, and then basically every time you exfoliate, um, you're helping your tan fade more evenly. Um, rather than with the face, I mean, sometimes people over exfoliate, which helps the tan yeah. fade too quickly. Um, so I'd say like every three days, every three days. And James, we've just got time for one more question. So I'm just going to sure. try and squeeze this one in that I had uh, my own was, if you could go back in time and tell your younger self one thing um, about working in the spray tanning industry, what would that be? Uh... Sorry, it's a tough one. I should have pre-warned you about that. Oh no, I've got a thing. <laughs> I tell myself something differently uh yeah any advice that you'd give yourself or any kind of um i don't know words of encouragement uh, i can't think <laughs> sorry james i should i always think I do, it's funny, funny isn't it how you say encouragement wise oh i'd probably say let's be less sensitive yeah <laughs> yeah i'm quite a sensitive person but yeah no i think when i was younger i was much more sensitive so I think mm -hmm. um, being more thick skinned, not really worry, don't worry about what other people are. And I think when I was younger, I, I wanted to please people too much. So I was always saying yes and yes and yes and um, doing whatever I can to make that person like me. But I think as a bit older, you kind of, you become comfortable in your own skin and mm -hmm. think to yourself, you know what? And also taking risks, like, and never, reg and never regret anything. Like regrets are there for a reason. Um, and you meet people for a reason. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hope that answered your question. <laughs> no, it did. That was brilliant, James. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. And thanks everyone for the questions and have a lovely, enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> like go and get pims, get a wine, get a beer, <laughs> anything. I'm not yeah. an alcoholic, by the way. I'm just sort of reviving the people <laughs> Me I want to drink. <laughs> yeah. And also just for anybody who came into this live sort of halfway through, um, we will be putting this live on the Professional Beauty YouTube channel on Monday. So if you did want to go back and watch it for the start, or you wanted to hear any of James's advice again, you will be able to. But and if James, you've got any questions, just yeah. message me and I'll come back with the questions and stuff. Oh, James, that's amazing. But thank you yeah. so much. No and worries. hopefully I'll get to see you in the flesh sometime. Oh, yeah, later. definitely. Definitely, yeah. And yeah, I think... I'll send you some new products as well. Yeah, oh, thank you. But everybody, go have a drink. Go enjoy yourself for the weekend. Yeah, take care. Guys next Friday. Thank you so much. All right, lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.